organizational behavior or what organizational behavior is. Is that clear? Is that true? Yes. That is yes, Prof. Fantastic. We have covered diversity management, which is number two, diversity in organization. Is that true? Yes. Diversity. Yes, we have covered diversity. Then uh, we have covered, uh, yeah, diversity we have covered, which include gender and all the rest. We have covered uh, uh, perception and individual decision making. They do it. Yes. yes. Perception we did today. We have covered motivation concepts. They do it. Yes, we yes that we did. We have covered teams, yes. under, understanding team. Do you remember that? Yes. We have covered team, team, understanding work team. Yes. Yes. Great. We have okay. covered we have covered foundations of group behavior. That Fund yeah. Foundations of good behavior. We have covered that. Yes. Can you confirm? Yes, Prof. Yeah, we covered that in this one. We have covered interpersonal communication. Communication. Did you do that? We did. Yes, we did that yesterday. Yeah. Fantastic. We have covered organizational culture. Did you do that? Organizational culture. Yes, yes. Okay. We have covered foundations of organizational structure. Yes, we did. Okay. We have covered leadership. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Okay. We have covered powers, power and politics. We did that today. Great. We have covered conflict and negotiation. We did that yesterday. Fantastic. So you can see that that is the that is the last topic. Of yes. The so we are left. We are left with personality and values, and of course, uh, uh, and uh, uh, attitude and job satisfaction. So at this hour, I will take you on uh, personalities and values that you will do attitude and job satisfaction as a self-reading. I had actually asked you to do both of them as self-reading, but now I want to cover the personality and value. Then you do attitude and job satisfaction as self-reading. But if I still have time in the course of the week, and if you guys have time, uh, we can always uh, uh, have a discussion around attitude and just satisfaction. Uh, uh, basically, when you are busy, also with your assignment, is that clear? Yes, professor. Yes, prof. And yes, professor. It's clear. Great, 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 great. Okay, thank you very much, colleagues, and uh, I like the lady that said fantastic. <laughs> 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 that was my <laughs> <laughs> I'm just grateful to be out of our health stop. I almost died. <laughs> Good. Okay, we'll progress. <laughs> Great. Uh, let me rest my mask pointer. Uh, let me just get my mask pointer. Let me see if I, I left it elsewhere. Well. Hailstorm finished, Sabrina. Yes, it seems to be finished now, at least here where I am. Yeah, my brother. My side is finished. No, I must, I must tell you that this your lecture is a marathon lecture. You know, marathon is <laughs> heavily loaded and uh, uh, quite a marathon. Full of uh, energy. Full of energy, to be frank, you know. So one have to actually be full of energy to be part of it. And of course, uh, uh, to lecture it also, uh, 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 because uh, 
uh, it requires a lot of uh, energy, a lot of uh, preparation, and uh, preparing within little time interval. I, I tell you, within this period, I was not having a normal sleep, you know, uh, because I have to actually prepare to give you the best uh, in terms of uh, uh, the lecture and, of course, uh, uh, some of the interaction that we're having, you know. And uh, like I told you, uh, you were lucky, you guys are lucky that at least uh, uh, I have uh, taught uh, organizational behavior and communication in several universities. Otherwise, uh, uh, it would have been something one is really busy preparing to uh, deliver the lecture. So uh, like I told you, I just jump into, into the class uh, uh, when I visited uh, uh, NAST recently and uh, uh, just on academic visit and uh, uh, James uh, uh, told me that uh, please they would like to uh, uh, engage me to assist with uh, organizational behavior uh, because the guy that was actually lecturing it, I think uh, uh, he took uh, uh, the other responsibilities in his new university, you know. So uh, I was a little bit uh, <laughs> Taking off, I, the, I don't want to actually refuse, but I don't want to, but it's okay, I can, uh, I can assist. And that is uh, what we're doing now. And I tell you, within this short moment, I was able to learn so much uh, about your system. Like I told you, I have not uh, uh, basically lectured on team. Uh, we have our own specific uh, uh, lecturing uh, 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 platform, uh, which is uh, called Blackboard at UJ. And of course, apart from Blackboard, if I want a kind of a few minutes a lecture with students, my masters and PhD, I tell them, okay, join me on Zoom. I send them a Zoom invite, but one problem with Zoom is that uh, Zoom is always logging you out after uh, 40 minutes or 45 minutes, you know, uh, which may not be very consistent. Uh, I have also used uh, Google Meet. Uh, which, uh, of course, I have used uh, in delivering some uh, conference papers in some of the online conferences. I think, like in India, they, pr they prefer to use Google Meet. In uh, Romania, also, they use Google Meet, you know. So, but uh, I think uh, I'm learning uh, about your platform. I just learned about your pl uh, platform just recently. So, everything was just like marathon, marathon, marathon jump into the operation, you know, so it was quite healthy, you know, learning, taking a very short workshop and uh, uh, making progress, you know. So uh, I'm very grateful also for uh, you guys, uh, uh, the students in, the, in this class, because uh, you really cooperated and you really supported. And that is why I always say that uh, the class is not just for the lecturer, uh, it is all our class to make it happen and to make us to succeed in that class, you know, uh, certainly. And of course, uh, uh, on the basis of that, I think uh, I will take cognizance of that in terms of your participation mark, because there is also a mark for participation. Uh, but also, I will also take cognizance of those I had their voices more in the class also, uh, in terms of participation mark. But I will definitely acknowledge every one of you. Uh, but there are people that I know their voices and their bladder in the class. Uh, when, I, when I watch my video, I will take note of those people also. So uh, thank you very much. I will progress uh, with the class now. Uh, the, the topic of personality and value. Is that clear? Yes, yeah, Prof. Fantastic. All right.
Yeah, can you see the slide? Yes, Prof. Organizational behavior. Great. And personalities and values. Colleagues, what can you see there? Yes, Prof. Can you see the slide? Yes, personality. Yes, prof, prof, Professor. Personality. 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 You know, when they say the personality of a person, that is to say that every individual have their own ideas. I do secretic uh, personality. That is, uh, every person have their own personality, specific personality. Can you see? Specific personality. When we talk about personality, we are talking about the sum total of ways in which an individual react to and interact with the others or with others. Can you see? The sum total of ways which an individual react to and interact with other people, can you see, or with others. Uh, uh, Gideon, Gideon Oppert described personality as the dynamic organization within the individual, can you see? Describe personality as the dynamic organization within an individual of those psychophysical systems. I cannot see this. Hello? Hello? Yeah, Professor, I cannot see the slide. Maybe I'll be able to buy it. You are not seeing the slide? No. OK, can you log off and join again? OK, 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 OK. Can you see it now? No, I cannot see it. Let me let me log in in. in let yeah, me log yeah. out. Yeah, just just do that because I think your colleagues are seeing it. Or is there any other person that is not seeing it? Um, I can see. You can see. Okay, fantastic. All right. Okay. So Gideon Airport, while describing uh, or describing personality, says that personality is the dynamic organization within the individual or within an individual of those psychophysical, both psychology and of course physical system, psycho and physical, the general physical system that determine his unique adjustment that determine the unique adjustment of a person to his environment. And you see, that is the definition according to uh, Gordon uh, Oppert with regards to personality. And we must keep in mind that research has shown personality tests to be useful in hiring decisions. Research has shown personality tests to be useful in hiring decision and forecasting who is best for your job. I think uh, uh, naturally, I remember when I joined uh, UJ, yes, I underwent a uh, personality test. And of course, when I was even about to join NAST, there was a time uh, I got a job as a professor and a director at the NAST. I went just along the line, uh, uh, I couldn't, uh, I did, uh, I decided to continue with UJ, you know, uh, basically, you know. I knew that there were some personality tests that was done where they send you a lot of questionnaires and you'll be responding to certain things. Uh, people who know how to evaluate personality use that to know the kind of person you are in terms of your personality. Whether you have a kind of agreeable personality or you have a kind of difficult personality, or whether you have 
a kind of conscientious personality or the opposite. Can you see? So personality tests, normally they, most often they use it in hiring decisions. Even at times also uh, 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 at UJ, at postgraduate level, sometimes they use personality tests to also recruit students. But I remember that in my own, uh, uh, the course I was leading, which was of course uh, the master's and PhD in employment relations, I told my colleagues that I'm not going to use a personality to recruit people, can you see? Because sometimes also the, per the personality test may also have limitation. For instance, if you tell a black guy to assess a white person's uh, personality, he may give a very uh, 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 a pre an impression uh, assessing the person from, of course, uh, his own background and his own <laughs> belief. This until applied uh, to a white uh, person assessing a black person. So personality test sometimes also uh, can be challenged uh, through lit uh, litigation in South Africa also. Can you see? So one have to be cautious when you are using uh, some of those uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, personality uh, 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 instruments, or uh, there's uh, a term they normally use for it. Um, uh, uh, a kind of uh, uh, personality, uh, it could be a personality questionnaire or a personality, uh, uh, it could also be called apparatus. Uh, but there is one particular term that is also uh, not batteries, yeah, personality batteries. You know, the, the psychologists always use such kind of terms, personality batteries. You see? So one must be a little bit cautious, you know. So research has shown personality tests to be useful in hiring decision, recruitment. And of course, in forecasting who is best for a job. And you see, research has shown there are some research backing uh, that, of course, uh, 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 personality tests can be used. And you see, so personality can be measured through self report survey. It can be measured through self report survey, it's, which is, of course, uh, when an individual gives a report of himself through a survey. Like I told you, uh, when I, 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 I applied for a job uh, at NAST. Uh, a job related to uh, the deanship then uh, at the NAS. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello, Professor. Yes. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just want to know something. Um, how authentic is it by, uh, you know, sending someone a questionnaire about personality? How, 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 how can you measure that this person is giving you the true information? Because I can put it in my own hands that if you send me something, I may not really tell you what is going on. I'll actually, you know, take what is I think is relevant for the whole community and society, but does not really give a true no, identity you know, of me. How how do okay. You know, when it comes to personality battery, they don't even ask you questions that you think you are answering whether truth or false. They ask you so many questions that are related. Can you see? Where they test the consistency of how you respond. Even you may find yourself answering another question that is the same question, but they have asked it in a reverse format. Or they have asked it, you know, maybe they ask, uh, whether you like uh, blue color, uh, then you tick, uh, uh, or maybe they ask, what is your best color you tick blue? Then they can ask again, uh, is blue a good color? You, you can tick. Then they ask again, how do you normally do this? You tick. Now they ask that same question in a different way. You may even end up ticking opposite that they will know that, no, this is not your true personality. Can you see? So they don't ask you direct. So they have the battery, normal battery they use in testing that, and you see, or the questionnaire they use in testing that, and you see. They will ask so many multiple questions, you know, to see how consistent 
you you reflect the pers the particular personality. Can you see? So consistency now make them to say, okay, this may be this person uh, personality. Can you see? So uh, uh, it's not a direct question where you can actually lie or uh, tell them this, but they may be asking different different things that are, although not showing that they relate, but in actual sense they relate. Can you see? So when I did my personal test, at least for Namibia University of Science and Technology one, and the same thing UJ, I know that there were so many questions and in fact, I have to think about it and guess and just choose uh, the one I think I'm, I'm more closer to or the one I think I'm more, I'm more related to, can you see? So they just want to know uh, your personality, things you like, things you dislike. Uh, they can bring up question, contentious question, and see how you, uh, what you, what you, how you respond to it. Can you see to see whether okay you you are a kind of uh, uh, agreeable or you are a kind of a difficult kind of person. You know, so many things they test in the personality test. So they use a, some kind of batteries, and uh, of course uh, the psychologist. And of course, uh, organizational psychologists know exactly what they are looking for. In fact, in my institution that uh, in those days, the main person that normally look into the responses of uh, 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 people is a lady called, uh, uh, in fact, she's the co-author with, uh, with Robin and George, this your textbook, this recommended textbook, organizational behavior. But now they are only the South African version, but every content is the same. You know, Robin and George, uh, Robin and George have written their own, uh, but now some South African uh, author, which include Odenda and Gatru, two of my colleagues in my department, decided to write the South African version. But definitely they have to, of course, uh, include Robin and George. Can you see? So the person, the expert, the most recognized expert, in South Africa that normally assess those personality tests is this lady, uh, Aleta Odenda. Aleta Odenda. She's, uh, she was my colleague, but she has now left UJ to Stellenbosch University. Can you see? So that is, it takes an expert. It's not something everybody can actually uh, 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 be able to analyze to, to, to get a fact, you know. So research has shown that personality tests uh, to be useful in hiring decision and forecasting who is best for a job, all right? So I, I hope I was able to answer your question uh, before progressing. Yes, sir, yes, sir, thank okay. you. Okay, yeah. So uh, research has shown uh, personality tests to, uh, to be useful in hiring decision and forecasting who is best for a job. And like I told you, uh, for me also, I felt that there could be certain uh, limitation in terms of personality test, particularly if the person uh, evaluating or if the person analyzing the data is biased. And you see, it's biased either uh, as a result of his or her perception or the background or his own stereotypical uh, mindset. So that is why in the course I was leading, I told them that I don't need any test when they ask me, can you see? So, so that we don't create a situation where some individuals, you know, they were negatively assessed. And I told them that I have a different way of selecting students uh, that will be doing my course. And the, I, I decided to use the writing skill of the student and interview, can you see? The writing skill is submit a mini proposal, which I read to know who can write and who cannot write. And after that, I will then set up a, an interview panel where they, call, they come now to tell us what they have written. And of course, they tell us why they, they should be, uh, of course, enrolled or recruited into, into a particular course uh, when there are so many applicants. They have to motivate and justify it uh, uh, physically or face-to-face uh, -face conversation, in face-to-face -face conversation. And through that process also, you know whether actually the proposal was written by them, the mini proposal was written by them. 
based on interaction. You can evaluate whether the proposal, uh, the proposal seems, too, uh, seems too good to be true from the person that you are conversing, uh, you are conversing with, all right? So personality can be measured through self-reporting survey, like uh, I have mentioned, where individuals evaluate themselves on a series of statements. Now, a survey can be given to you where now you evaluate yourself, you, you take certain information to evaluate yourself on a series of uh, statements. There are others which is called observer rating survey, where a co-worker or another observer does the rating. After observing you, he rates you on the basis of his or her observation. So observer rating survey tend to be better predictors of success on the job. And you see, observer, when another person evaluates, uh, it tend to be a better predictor of success on the job. And, you see. and uh, of course, uh, we're still talking about uh, personality. The research has shown that an individual's personality appears to be the result of both hereditary, what you inherited from your parents. And you see, personality appears to be the result of both hereditary. Hereditary is the trait that you are born with, can you see? And of course the environment shapes one personality. Although research shows that hereditary tend to be more important than of course uh, 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 environmental issues that are influences uh, one's uh, personality. Now, what is hereditary? Hereditary is the, uh, the factors. Factors determine at conception, what you are born with, factors that you are born with, certain traits that you show when you are born. For instance, one's biological, physios, uh, physiological, and of course, inherent psychological makeup, or makeup, sorry, inherent psychological makeup. So studies of twin twins separated at birth and raised separately have shown that heredity plays a big part, a big role in determining personality. Two twins were born and of course separated. But of course, when uh, the researcher decided to assess them, he discovered so many commonality between these two twins that were separated which is to show that hereditary plays a key role. Despite the fact that they were brought up in different environment, but they still reflect a certain traits that are similar to one another. And you see, studies of twins separated at birth, raised separately have shown that hereditary plays a big part in determining personality. These studies also suggest that parents do not add much to our personal personality development. This study also suggests that parents do not, which is of course a, 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 standardly, a standard issue that personality comes from within what you are born, born with. Parents do not add much in terms of uh, uh, lecturing you or guiding you, or advising you in uh, to our personality development. You see? Now, personality traits, that is enduring characteristics that describe an individual behavior. Those are the traits, you see, enduring characteristics. And you remember when we talk about leadership, we spoke about trait theory, which is of course certain innate characteristics that you are born with, you see, enduring characteristics that describe an individual's behavior. And of course, with regards to personality, we have, of course, uh, one of the uh, batteries that we normally use in testing uh, personality was, of course, propounded by uh, Mayor Briefs. That is why it is normally referred to Mayor Briefs type indicator, that is MBTI. And sometimes when you want to do a personality test, you hear people say, we will send you an MBTI questionnaire. And you see, which is a personality test that tap four characteristics and classify people into one of system personality types. And, you see. and of course, in terms of MBTI, uh, uh, MBTI 
classify people into four categories of personality. The first category there is extraversion versus intro introversion. The second one is sensing versus intuition. The third one is thinking versus feeling. The uh, next one is, of course, uh, the fourth one is, of course, judging versus perceiving. Can you see? Judging versus perceiving. Can you see? So now with regards to extraversion versus intro introversion, extraverted individuals tend to be outgoing. They are outgoing people. Uh, they are sociable. They are assertive. What introverted type of uh, uh, person prefer to focus on their inner world, seem quiet and reflective, can you see? And of course, if you remember our leadership theory when we spoke about the big five, uh, we spoke about the possibility that leaders uh, could be more extroverted, can you see? Because that extraversion can of course enable someone to influence others and leaders are sociable also. And leaders are, of course, outspoken, assertive, can you see? And outgoing, can you see? So introvert sometimes, of course, is difficult to understand what is in their mind uh, with regards to leadership. Then, of course, sensing versus intuition, intuitive or intuition. That is, of course, sensing type are practical. Those who use their sensory input are practical, they prefer routine and order. They prefer jobs that are done routinely, systematically, procedurally. And they, be, they prefer orderliness and order and focus on detail. They focus on detail. That is those that use sensory input or sensing type of uh, personalities. And of course, uh, intuitive types of personality rely more on abstract process, abstract processes, and tend to look at the bigger picture. And it's instead of caging themselves to a routine, order, and focus detail, focus on detail, they look at the bigger picture. Can you see? They tend to look at the bigger picture. They tend to look out of the bus. Can you see? And of course, uh, uh, we have, also, of course, personality type in terms of thinking versus feelings. Thinking type of personalities handle problem with reason and logic. Can you see? Why feeling type of individuals, uh, feeling type rely on personal values. Feeling type rely on personal values to make decisions. Can you see? What is the value that you believe in? Your ethos, your perception, can you see? Before decisions are made. Then judging versus perceiving. Can you see? Judging versus perceiving is another personality type because certain individuals are judgmental also. But some people perceive before they talk or before they judge. So judging type prefer their world to be planned and systematic. Perceiving type tend to be flexible and of course spontaneous. Can you see? So these are different personalities that one can observe in the workplace. And of course, uh, we have, of course, uh, other aspects of, uh, 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 other aspects of uh, personal, uh, 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 personality, which is, of course, combining, combining the classification yield, yield system personality type. Uh, type, identifying every person by one preference from each, of the four pairs, such as, of course, uh, IN, INTJ. Uh, INTJ simply means uh, 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 a kind of uh, uh, introversion, introversion, intuitive, intuition, and thinking uh, versus judging. Can you see? Intuition, uh, in, uh, intuition, introversion versus judging, which is, of course, uh, uh, the first, uh, 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 yeah, uh, I N T K. Uh, just a moment. Uh, introversion, intuition, and thinking, uh, and of course, uh, uh, judging, which is of course visionaries with 
original mind. These people fall under visionaries, visionaries with original mind and great drive, who are skeptical, critical, independent, determined, and often stubborn. Can you see? That is those who uh, operate uh, from the perspective of introversion, intuition, thinking, and of course, judging. That is, of course, the INTJs. Then, of course, we have the ESTJs. ESTJs, uh, in terms of ESTJs, uh, they, uh, they are a little bit, uh, uh, just a minute, I just want to get uh, some perspective. They are skeptical, critical, independent, determined, and stubborn, that is the first one. ESTJ are described as organizers. ESTJs, they are described as organizers who are realistic, they are logical, they are analytical, and of course, uh, uh, they are uh, uh, decisive uh, with a natural head uh, for business and of course, mechanics. That is of course, uh, the ESTJs. And uh, ESTJs, the full meaning there for ESTJs, that is uh, of course, extra, uh, uh, extra version. And of course, uh, 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 of course, thinking, and of course, judging, Est uh, est extroversion, uh, sensing, thinking, and of course, uh, judging. That is the ESTJ. Then, of course, we have uh, other group who, uh, who are, of course, ENTP. ENTP are kind of conceptualizers who are innovative, individualistic. Versatile and they accept more in entrepreneurship, entrepreneurial, but uh, adverse to routine, uh, to routine uh, tax. So, uh, basically, in terms of personality tests, MBTI is widely used by organizations uh, to measure a personality test. Uh, uh, apart from this theory that have been enumerated, MBTI is widely used by organizations, but is more suited to person, uh, personal, career, and team development. It's more suited for personal, career, and team development rather than for selection of employees into the workplace. Uh, so recent South Africa research shows that MBTI work the same way across ethnic and gender groups. And you see, it's a research, of course, uh, 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 in South Africa, but of course, it depends on who is uh, doing the research and, of course, who is giving such a, a, a feedback also. All right. And of course, with regards to personality, we, like I mentioned uh, previously, we have uh, the big five personality, which is, of course, from Steve of Mayor Briggs, you know, Mayor's Briggs, big five personality model, a personality assessment model that tap five basic dimensions of uh, individuals or personalities. The first one is extraversion, which is a personality dimension describing someone who is sociable, gregarious, and assertive. I think we have also covered this when we did the leadership. Agreeableness, which is of course a personality dimension that describes someone who is good, good nurtured, cooperative, and trusted. And of course, conscientiousness, which is a personality dimension that describes someone who is responsible, dependable, persistent, and organized. And of course, emotional stability, which is a personality dimension that, this, that uh, characterizes someone that is calm, self-confident, and secure, positive, versus nervous, depressed, and insecure kind of person, a uh, negative. That open to experiment, a personality dimension that characterize, characterize someone in terms of imagination, sensitivity, and of course, curiosity, open to experience. So these are uh, different uh, uh, personality types, the five big five personality uh, uh, model as, in, as initiated by Mayor Briggs. All right. Now, uh, we we'll talk about how the big five traits influence organizational behavior. The big five traits, personality type. I think I need to expand this, uh, 
uh, this uh, diagram a little bit, if I have my way, that, uh, uh, sorry about that. Uh, uh, okay, uh, maybe you guys can see it, or otherwise I can uh, uh, put it in a non-sharing mode and uh, non-sharing mode and expand it a little bit for more people to see. All right. Okay. Okay, you can see the B5 model there uh, in terms of personality types. Uh, we consider big five, uh, emotional stability, extraver extraversion, openness, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and of course, why is it relevant? Less negative thinking, emotional stability has uh, have less negative thinking and fewer negative emotions, and of course, less hyper uh vigilant you see so what does it affect higher job or life satisfaction higher job and life satisfaction lower stress level that is for somebody who has emotional stability uh what it does uh what it does affect in organization is higher job and life satisfaction and such kind of person has a kind of low level of stress uh, uh, while working within an organization. And of course, we have extraversion. Extraversion, why is it relevant? Better interpersonal skill. You see, better extraversion is perceived as better interpersonal skills, greater social dissonance. And you see, extravert. They have better social dissonance, more emotionally expressive. They express their emotion easily and of course what does it uh, what does it affect in organization it have, it have, how it affect higher performance enhanced leadership and of course a uh, 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 higher job uh, supports higher performance and of course uh, 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 I think there's an asterisk there let me see what the asterisk is alluding to in job requiring significant teamwork or frequent interpersonal interaction. Okay, uh, such can be uh, in terms of higher performance uh, for job, for job requiring significant teamwork and frequent interaction. It can bring about higher performance in, in such job uh, when someone is extraverted or when someone is uh, uh, within the, uh, within the uh, confined or within that uh, particular uh, 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 particular personality type, uh, which is extraversion. Now another one is uh, in the big five, which is of course openness. Openness. Why is openness relevant? That is openness support increased learning, more creativity, and of course more flexible or autonomous uh, uh, work uh, practices in the workplace. And of course. What does it affect uh, in the workplace? Uh, openness support training, training, and of course it support performance. It enhances leadership, and of course it's more ad it's more adaptable to change. Openness when someone is open, is open to any new realities and would be ready to adapt. And of course we have the next one in terms of the big five, which is agreeableness. Agreeableness. Uh, why is it relevant? It leads better light. Somebody is light better because they agree uh, uh, easily and of course is able to uh, uh, move on uh, with uh, new demands in the organization. Uh, more compliant. Somebody who is agreeable is more compliant and of course conforming you know, uh, 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 to the organization's uh, uh, activities or to group activities. And of course, uh, what, what, what does it affect in organization? Higher performance. It affects higher, it 
support higher performance if, uh, as the case may be, or lower level of different behavior. When somebody is agreeable, uh, his uh, different behavior is somehow reduced, you know, uh, because he's always wanting a, a kind of mutual understanding and a kind of mutual agreement. And of course, the next one is conscientiousness. Consciousness, what is, what is it relevant? Greater effort and persistence, can you see conscientious? More drive and discipline, better organized and planning, can you see? Higher performance, you need to, of course, higher performance, and of course, enhanced leadership, and of course, greater longevity of organization, All right? And of course, of individual, that is, of course, uh, conscientious. All right. Is that clear? Is self explanatory? Is that clear? Yes, Prof. Great. We'll progress. Yeah. Now, core self evaluation. Core self evaluation. That is the degree to which an individual likes or dislikes himself or herself. Whether the person sees himself or herself as capable or effective, and whether the person feels, feels in control of his or her environment or powerless over the environment. That is called uh, self evaluation. And of course, uh, with regards to that, of course, we also have uh, uh, just a minute. I think there should be a title to that. Okay, yeah. yeah uh, this The title has to be. Uh, I will now change to. I will now change to the share slide from current position, uh, because initially uh, the table was very tiny, which is why I have to magnify it. Other personality, other personality traits relevant to organizational behavior includes core self uh, uh, evaluation. That is the degree to which an individual likes or dislikes himself or herself whether the person sees himself or herself as capable and effective, and whether the person feels in control of his or her environment or powerless over the environment. And of course, we have other personality traits relevant to OB, uh, which is, of course, uh, Machiavellianism, uh, which is, of course, the degree to which an individual is pragmatic, maintains emotional distance, and believed the end can justify the means. Can you see? And of course, we have another personality type, which is, of course, narcissism. That is the tendency to be arrogant, have a grandiose sense of self importance, and require excessive admiration, and have a sense of entitlement. And so that is narcissism. Right. Personality will still progressing with that. Other personality traits relevant to OB include self-monitoring. Self-monitoring is a personality trait that measures an individual's ability to adjust his or her behavior to external situational factors. Can you see? That is self-monitoring. That is self-monitoring can also reflect, uh, for instance, when, when you are in Rome, act like Romans. As somebody who can actually change the environment, scan the environment, and of course, change his behavior to be in line with the environment where he or she is actually functioning. Can you see? And of course, another personality uh, trait has to do with risk taking. People differ in their willingness to take chances, which is of course to take risk. This affects how much time and information they need to make a decision, can you see? And the study shows that high risk taking managers tend to make more rapid decisions. They tend to make decisions frequently and rapidly and use less information than low risk takers. Although decision accuracy was the same for both. So you remember when we told, uh, spoke about perception and decision making, we made mention of the fact that so managers prefer to follow rational approach, gather data, look at the problem, analyze the problem, set criteria, uh, make a choice, you know. But there are also managers that will just scan the environment, take the few uh, 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 information that sat satisfies 
and make decision as quick as possible. And of course, there are managers that can just use quick intuition and make decision based on this team experience. So they don't need to start following this rigorous and systematic process. But of course, research has proven that both of them can, of course, the decision taken by both the rational decision approach and, of course, Lama, uh, 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 very experienced manager, can be accurate in the same fashion. They can be equal in terms of accuracy. So certain job demands are ideal for high risk takers. There are certain job demands that are ideal for high risk takers who can make decisions rapidly with little information. For instance, stockbrokers, you see, may of course uh, 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 be a risk taker, you know, stockbroker. What are some job demands are not some, also what are some, some job demands are not? You cannot take a rapid decision or you cannot take lesser information. For instance, accounting, you have to follow process. You have to make sure the, large, uh, the ledger is balanced. You have to make sure the trial balance is properly uh, 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 inputted. You have to make sure the journal entries were properly recorded. You have to make sure that the asset and liability balances, can you see, under such circumstances, you will not be in a rush or take a rash decision. Can you see? And of course, you cannot take a rash decision if you are working as air traffic controller. Can you see? Because any mistake you make will lead to a plane crash or an accident. Can you see? It is, so you have to be very, very meticulous if you are, of course, uh, operating within this two environment. All right. Personality. Other personality traits relevant to OB, proactive personality. Proactive personality are people who identify opportunities, show initiative, take action, and persevere until meaningful, until meaningful chance occur, or meaningful, uh, meaningful change occur, sorry. So other orientation, uh, other orientation, personality trait that reflect the extent to which decisions are affected by social influences and concerns versus own well-being and outcomes. Can you see? So that's another personality trait. Now we'll talk about values. Values. Values, basic conviction. Values are basic conviction that we have as a person that a specific mode of behavior or conduct or end state of assistance is personally and socially preferable to an opposite or converse mode of conduct or end state of assistance. You see, that is values. You see. And like in terms of value, we have, of course, religious values, we have cultural values, we have organizational values, and we have so many values. You see. Then, of course, value system. Value system stands from value. Value system is a hierarchy based on a ranking of an individual's values in terms of the intensity. Can you see? That is the value system. Value tend to be relatively stable and enduring. Value tend to be relatively stable and enduring over time. A significant portion of the values we hold is established in our early years. And it's a significant portion of our values. That is not value, not personality. A significant portion of our values we hold is established in our early years by our parents, our teachers, our friends, and others. And you see, a significant part of it. And I remember one of my friends who is actually uh, training the children from home. And I was advising her, no, send them to school. He said, no, he, she, uh, she preferred to actually uh, 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 do it that way, you know. And I was actually advising that you, you, your children cannot only learn from you or learn from few individuals, maybe family members. That the bottom line of the matter is that children can, of course, learn from other colleagues, learn from other children learn the kind of tricks of other children. At times, you can see children actually <laughs> creating some funny, funny things among themselves. 
One can be somebody who, who always pinch you in the class. One can be somebody who always uh, smile in the class. One can be somebody who is very cunning. One can be in all this. We learn as human beings. So that when you grow into an adult, when you see such tendency, you can remember, oh, this is what this guy normally do when we were small. Can you see? You know. So you learn. Uh, children, it's better to learn in school. Because you meet many people, you meet many characters. So how playing with those people, associating with those people, shape your character too, and shape your thought. Can you see? So that is why early years, my parents, teachers, friends, and others. And of course, uh, influence a person's uh, value. And of course, these values are taught in absolutes. Can you see? These values are taught in absolute, which ensure their stability. Can you see? Which ensure their stability. When they say absolute, there is no comparison when these values are taught, which ensure that they endure in you while you are growing up. Can you see? And certainly there are so many values that we have actually uh, obtained from our parents. And of course, our teachers. And of course, our friends, which are embedded in us, but sometimes we don't know that we have, where we have actually obtained most of these values that we today uh, 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 see as our own value. And of course, value can also be obtained from the church, uh, 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 the church you go to. You know, some of the values. Uh, for instance, you must not smoke becomes a value. For uh, if, if you're a member of uh, a particular Pentecostal church, even there are some Pentecostal churches that say you cannot drink alcohol. And you say, but Jesus Christ turned the water into wine in Kenya. So uh, that is also value. And you see people abiding by this value that uh, you cannot drink wine or you cannot drink alcohol. And you see, but of course, uh, that becomes a value that they have actually accepted and putting that into practice. Uh, and accept that as giving or as uh, authentic uh, uh, information uh, with regards to uh, issues of value. The importance of value, why is value important? Value lay the foundation for our understanding of people's attitude. That is why it is important. It lays the foundation for our understanding of people's attitude and motivation and influence their perception, can you see? and influence their values, influence people's perception. You remember when we uh, 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 discussed perception? I told you that perception can come from someone's background. And you see, and background shapes value system, and you see, uh, uh, basically. So value could be objective and rational, uh, uh, value could be objective uh, rationally, oh, sorry, values, Values can cloud, sorry. Values can cloud objectivity and rationality. Values can cloud object. That is why I told you that, for instance, what you perceive may not be true. Now you see, it is because of what we think, our, how we see it is. It can also be because of our value system, which may not be objective. Value can cloud objectivity and rationality. They influence attitude and, of course, their behavior. So employees' attitude and behavior will likely be more optimal if their value coincide with those of their organization. So the attitude and behavior of an employee will be more optimal if the, their value coincide or their value is in line with those of the organization that they want to work. For, can you see? And of course, uh, in terms of uh, uh, actually uh, uh, getting uh, uh, more clue about the value, there's what they call uh, the Roker's Value Survey, which consists of two sets of values. The first one there is terminal values, and the second one is instrumental value. Terminal value naturally describe uh, or, uh, the desirable end state of existence. Can you see? Uh, that is the goal a person would like to achieve during his or her lifetime. And see, that is why it is called, of course, a, a terminal value. And of course, we have 
instrumental value. Instru instrumental value is actually a preferable mode of behavior. You see, preferable mode of behavior or other means of achieving one's uh, terminal value. That is, of course, uh, 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 with regards to uh, terminal as well as uh, uh, instrumental values. All right. Now we have, of course, with regards to value, we have, of course, generational values. Generational value, this analysis is limited as one cannot assume the framework apply, uh, that the framework applies across all cultures. So there are limitations to the uh, generational value. There is little rigorous research on generational values and the categories uh, are imprecise. So the categories are imprecise. So you use it with caution. Value do change over generations, can you see? However, however, and we can gain useful insight from analyzing value in that way. Uh, of course, in the workplace, we have different generational uh, groupings. Like I mentioned to you previously, we have the baby boomers, uh, uh, who were born immediately after, uh, of course, some book says after the Second World War. Uh, in this book now, it's, it's saying from 1965 to 1985, but in some of the other books, uh, we have seen 1945 uh, up to uh, uh, that particular date. And we have, of course, the S generation, which is, of course, from 1985 to 2000. And of course, we have the Ne nesters, or uh, of course, some people refer to them as the S, uh, as the Y generation, which have of, of course been included with what is also known as the millennial generation. And you see, that the millennial generation are those born from 2000 uh, to the present uh, uh, period. And you see, and those people are under the years of uh, uh, under 30. So. Confident uh, in terms of baby boomers. Baby boomers, uh, we have already uh, said they are baby boomers now. Like I mentioned to you, uh, this uh, slide may uh, need some revision. Baby boomers should have re retired by now if we put them to be people born uh, immediately after the uh, uh, Second World War. So by now, baby boomers have retired uh, because uh, I remember. Uh, my very colleague, uh, uh, when I was at uh, uh, CPUT, uh, a British lady, uh, 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 Angie, uh, who, of course, uh, uh, used to be a baby boomer. She was, uh, in those days, uh, uh, she made me to understand that she was born in 1940, uh, in 1940 something. Uh, that, that is uh, 1946. So that put places her. Yeah. It's it's, yes. it's um, convenient to say you are definitely not a baby boomer. You say what? So it's convenient to say you are not a baby boomer. I'm not. No, I'm not a baby boomer. <laughs> baby boomers are in their seventies now or seventy something. So that is why I said uh, I can recall that. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, she she was uh, one of the uh, people that actually inducted me. At, uh, at CPUT, we were very good friends, you know, an elderly uh, woman who were sharing an office together uh, when I, I started uh, with CPUT, you know. So she, I believe by now she must have uh, retired a long time ago, you know, and uh, uh, she, she's uh, a baby boomer, you know. So I, I would not be a baby boomer. Okay, I may be uh, uh, an ESA, ESA generation, or of course, uh, uh, the uh, the white generation, can you see? Uh, uh, that is, uh, yeah, of course, uh, the the ESA generation, the, which is uh, the reason, Prof. Uh, maybe yeah. Prof. The reason I'm saying that is, I I remember in, in undergraduate, all the professors were very yeah. old. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Where where are the professors old? I'm saying in, in, in undergraduate, when I was doing my undergraduate, all my professors were old. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that is true. Uh, that is a fact. 
Uh, you know, in terms of uh, professorship, uh, it depends on your work, uh, the contribution that you have made to the field. Uh, it's not really about old age, uh, uh, but of course, uh, uh, when you see institutions where professors are very old, maybe the professors that will promote the younger professors uh, realize that they end their professorship at a very old age. And as a result of that, they want you to be old a little bit before you can get it. You know, but uh, in institutions that are more uh, proactive, uh, it is not uh, about age, it is about your contribution uh, to the uh, body of knowledge, your contribution to academia, your, your papers, how many papers have you delivered? How many people are citing your papers? How many PhDs have you graduated? How many masters have you graduated? Uh, what is your teaching portfolio? What are new thoughts that you have added in your field? And of course, uh, your community development, you know, all those things are things they assess before one can actually be called a, a professor, a full professor, not an associate professor, but I'm talking about a, a full professor. So if you have contributed at a younger age, uh, then definitely uh, 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 you will get it in a very progressive uh, environment, all right? Is that clear? Clear, Prof. Thank you very much for the insightful. Um, yeah. All right. So that is why, like I told you, in terms of the arrangement uh, in this uh, uh, test book, uh, I don't think uh, baby boomers are, uh, of course, uh, in uh, people born from 1965 to 1985. You know, uh, I think uh, baby boomers are older than this from other records that I have read before, uh, you know, in terms of uh, uh, different uh, other textbook that I have read with regards to baby boomers. All right, great. And uh, of course, uh, in terms of, uh, let's just use this textbook model. Uh, like I said, I will still confirm it uh, uh, from uh, 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 the current uh, textbook that we recommend. Uh, the, the, the desire is, of course, sources. The desire sources and the believing achievement, they want to achieve, you know, and of course, uh, uh, the, the ambitious, the dislike, the dislike of authority, the dislike too much authority, that is, they don't want so much supervision. They are loyal, loyalty to their career, very loyal, committed to their career. And of course, if we're talking about uh, uh, generation ESA or something of that nature. We are talking about their, 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 their work, they believe in work-life balance. They are team oriented, they dislike rules. Uh, uh, they, they are loyalty in their relationship. Now, when we talk about the nesters, uh, that is those born from 2000 to the present, uh, those under 30, they seem more confident than uh, uh, their, their parents. Uh, that is, uh, the previous generation. And of course, uh, some of them have more financial sources because uh, they are multi-skilled. And of course, they are computer savvy also. And of course, uh, self-reliant. Sometimes most of them are more self-reliant, uh, but uh, team-oriented, uh, of course, uh, team-oriented. Loyal to both self, they are loyal to themselves and uh, to relationships. So, First and foremost, they are loyal to themselves uh, before a uh, relationship, all right? But uh, of course, like I said, I will support uh, this material with other materials that also categorize uh, the different generation. And I think there are more than 30 of them in some other textbooks also, you know, to give a clearer perspective uh, in terms of uh, different generations, all right? So linking an individual's personality and value to the workplace, personality job fit theory. That is uh, uh, stemming from Holland's personality job fit uh, theory, a theory that identifies six personality types and proposes that the fit between personality type and occupational environment determines satisfaction and turnover. And you see, determine whether one is satisfied or uh, one leaves the organization, or one goes into attrition. So Holland's 
typology of personality and of course, congruent with occupation or uh, 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 that is in harmony with different occupation uh, are listed below. The first one is realistic, realistic individuals. And of course, realistic description about them is that uh, prefer physical activities that requires key strength and of course, coordination. The personality characteristic of such people is that they are shy, they are genuine, they are persistent, they are stable, they conform, they are conforming and they are practical. And of course, what kind of occupational level or occupational grouping can they function? They can function well as mechanics, drill press contract uh, operators, assembly line workers, and of course, farmer. Can you see? Those are the kind of people, realistic type of uh, personality. The next one is investigative type of people. Investigative type of people prefer activities that involve thinking, organization, and of course, understanding. And of course, personality characteristics of such people include analytical, original, curious. They are very curious and independent. And uh, that the job uh, that those people can function, congruent occupation, uh, they can be biologists, economists, mathematicians, and of course, uh, news reporters. And of course, another uh, aspect personality that is social, social. Then of course, uh, uh, description is, uh, these people prefer activities that involve helping and developing others. Can you see personality characteristics of social uh, kind of uh, uh, personality is that they are sociable, they are friendly, cooperative, and of course, understanding. And of course, the kind of work that those people can function is, is of course, they can work as social workers, teachers, counselors, clinical psychologists. And of course, the teachers will include both professors and lecturers. That is uh, those that are sociable. Because of course, you cannot be a teacher without being uh, uh, sociable. Uh, uh, those who are not very sociable and teaching, they just find themselves in the wrong job. Can you see? So keep that in mind. Because you are dealing with uh, people, you are dealing with more than one individual, which is of course a social unit or social unit. So you must be sociable uh, to be a good teacher. All right. Then of course conventional, conventional of course uh, uh, is another personality type, and of course uh, a description of such a uh, uh, personality type is of course prefer verbal, uh, uh, so prefer rule prefers rule, regulated, orderly, and of course, unambitious activities. Can you see? Oh, oh, sorry, unambiguous, unambiguous, not um, uh, unambitious, unambiguous activity, activities that are clear. Can you see? No ambiguity, can you see? And of course, uh, uh, in terms of them, personality characteristics of uh, conventional people is uh, the conformity, they conform, conforming, efficient, practical, unimaginative, inflexible. And of course, a good place where those people can function or work is as an accountant, as a corporate manager, as a bank teller, and of course, as a five, as a five clerk. And of course, we have a personality of people who are, of course, enterprising, personality type that of people that are enterprising, uh, prefer verbal activities in which there are opportunities to influence others and attain power. Uh, and of course, uh, personality characteristics of such people include self-confident, ambitious, and of course, uh, energetic, and of course, domineering. And of course, good congruent, this kind of uh, personality type will be much more congruent with a lawyer, real, real estate agent, uh, and of course, real estate agent, and of course, public relations specialist, small business manager, uh, will of course uh, 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 function with, uh, with enterprise with a personality type. And of course, the last one is artistic, artistic personality style that is prefer, ambi uh, prefer ambiguous and unsystematic activities that allow creative impression. And of course, the personality characteristics of artistic kind of person is of course, imaginative, disorderly, 
idealistic, emotional, impractical. And of course, the kind of job or that those kind of people can function include they can be painters, they can be musicians, they can be writers, they can be interior decorators, uh, etc. All right. Is that clear? It is also self explanatory. Yes, Prof. Fantastic. We progress. Linking an individual's personality and value to workplace. Person, which is, of course, uh, referred to as person organizational fit. If an organization faces a dynamic and changing environment and require employee able to change tasks readily and move easily between teams, it is more important that employees' personality fit with the organization overall culture than with the characteristics of any specific job. Okay, so it is more important that employees' personalities fit with the organization's overall culture than with the characteristics of any specific task. Okay, you see, that is to say that you have to follow the culture instead of sticking to one particular specific job, knowing one specific job that the organization does. Okay, you see. So person organizational fit uh, theory argues that people are attracted to and selected by organizations that match their values. Okay, you see. And they leave organizations that are not compatible with their value. That is why I also mentioned that the goals, the objective, what employees like should be in harmony with the goals, objective, and what organization want, so that there will be congress. Because if employee find himself in the wrong job, that will lead to turnover or attrition. And of course, if management or organization hires the wrong employee, definitely uh, uh, the organization may also be uh, 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 disappointed and of course, uh, may, may, may end up uh, uh, sacking the employee, or of course, dismissing the employee because of incompatibility between the organization's goal and, of course, the organization's aspiration, as well as the organization values and the employee's goals, aspiration, and, of course, values. All right. So research has shown that a match between a person's and an organization's value predicts job satisfaction. When the organization's value and the person's value is in harmony with one another, then definitely it supports job satisfaction. It makes the, the employee to give his best uh, to the organization. That is commitment uh, to the organization. And that, of course, uh, uh, help in reducing the uh, uh, turnover, employee turnover in a given organization. All right, is that clear? Yes, Prof. Fantastic. We we'll progress. Now, international values. International values. I think I have touched this particular uh, topic uh, when we discuss about uh, uh, diversity, but I will still reflect on it, which is, of course, uh, get hosted uh, with regards to uh, 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 differences. Uh, 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 differences within a uh, a given society, uh, uh, of course, uh, 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 with regards to culture, cultural differences. Uh, he, he gave uh, analysis in terms of, of course, uh, cultural differences, dimensions of cultural differences or uh, national culture, uh, different national culture. And according to Hofstede, he believed that there are certain cultures that have power distance, and there are certain cultures that have uh, a kind of uh, uh, a kind of reduce power distance or low power distance. Okay, you see, power distance, of course, is the degree to which people accept that power in institution and organization is distributed unequally. Okay, you see, that is to say, power distance can also be taken in such a way that the, the, the level uh, uh, of uh, the, the, the manager or the leader in the organization is quite is quite wide, uh, of course, uh, it's uh, a kind of long for somebody at the bottom level to approach the leader. So somehow leaders are perceived as mini-god. 
power distance also work more in, in a hierarchical organization than a flat organization. And of course, power distance function more in countries that are more individualistic rather than uh, countries that are uh, communitarian or participative in nature. America, for instance, America in America, there will be certainly a huge power distance between a manager and of course the subordinate. But that may not be the case in, country, in a country like Japan and of course some countries in the Scandinavia. And of course, Hofstede also with regards to uh, Hofstede, with regards to uh, 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 cultural differences also spoke about the fact that there are co uh, countries or national cultures that are individualistic. And of course, there are other uh, cultures that are collectivistic. That is individualism versus collectivism. And I have already mentioned already that America is individualistic oriented. And of course, some of the European countries are individualistic oriented versus other countries that are more collectivist in their approach. Can you see? And of course, uh, when we talk about collectivism, of course, in terms of certain African, uh, Black African uh, uh, regions, uh, most human beings are more collective. That is why in some African culture, a child is not the child of his parents alone. That is to say, if uh, a neighbor in the street find a child misbehaving or uh, uh, committing nuisance, he can even take a cane and flog him in African society. And the child can go back to the father crying and uh, he cannot even report to the father what happened because the man outside who knows his father is trying to correct his behavior. So that is a kind of collectivist orientation. But of course, within the workplace, we see more collectivism like in a country like uh, Japan also, can you see? Collectivist mindset. And of course, collectivism also can also be seen in some uh, probably uh, uh, societies in India. But of course, since the dawn of globalization and as a result of the fact that uh, India has now become more or less uh, uh, capitalist oriented, uh, I don't know whether that uh, uh, collectivism will still be a kind of uh, the orientation uh, in India. So Hofstede have given in terms of national culture that there are cultures that are uh, collectivist oriented while other cultures are of course uh, individualistic oriented. And capitalism which is tied to individualism is of course practiced in America and of course many parts of Europe, and you see. So that is why this seems individualistic uh, oriented. And of course, that is why you see that a next door neighbor can be dying in America and nobody attend to that. And sometimes also that seems to reflect in some of the cities in South Africa, where it seems that individualism has taken hold, where of course, we don't also value issues of communitarianism or collectivism. Whereby somebody may be dying in the next door, you just be sleeping, even when you hear that something is wrong. And you see, that is a good, a good example of uh, individualism. And you see, compared to collectivism, where in fact, uh, 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 the, and of course, the individualism in South Africa is much more pronounced among the white uh, uh, people than the black people, because South Africa also has, of course, what, what looks like uh, collectivism, which is reflected in what is called Ubuntu. That is, I am because you are, that is it. That is, I am alive, I am living because you are living, Ubuntu, and you see. So that reflects the African culture also of collectivism in terms of South Africa, and you see. And of course, uh, uh, another dimension that Hofstede has uh, proposed with regards to uh, dimensions of national culture between countries or between uh, uh, people within country is of course, muscularity versus uh, femininity. That there are certain cultures that reflect masculine behavior, muscularity. And a good example of a culture that you want to reflect muscularity is Russia compared to a country that will want to reflect feminism. 
Even if the leader is a man, the leader uh, a kind of is more considerate, more gentle, more polite in reaching consensus to problems. You see, some of those uh, 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 some of those uh, uh, leaders believe in a kind of integrative bargaining rather than distributive bargaining. Because feminines are more uh, female, female uh, uh, individuals are more uh, uh, willing to, of course, uh, expand the pie, discuss politely, unlike the muscular that want a kind of distributive uh, bargaining where they take all the pies, and you see. So muscularity and of course feminality, a good example of a country or a national culture that reflect muscularity is Russia versus country that reflect feminality, which is of course most of the Scandinavia countries that include like Finland, Norway, Sweden, and some of the other Scandinavia countries. And of course, Hafte, uh, Hofstad also, in terms of talking about national culture, has also demarcated between certainty and uncertainty avoidance. You see, uh, Hofstad is of the view that there are certain cultures that try to avoid taking risk. So they avoid uncertainty. And they do things well, of course, they are certain about it. You see. So a good example of a culture that is uncertainty avoidance is Africa. Most of the African uh, people, they don't take risk, which is why it seems to me that uh, lesser progress is taking place in Africa. Unlike people in America, somebody can enter into a flying saucer or a flying plane and move to moon or jump to the space, not caring whether he will die. Recently, three billionaires in America use different design of flight to enter into the space. These are billionaires. They don't care whether who will eat their money if they die. If it is an African man, he will say, oh, if I die, who will eat my money? Oh, my beautiful wife, somebody else will take over. <laughs> you see, so these are, these are issues that seems to be taking African behind. They avoid uncertainties, you see. So that if you look at European, they take risk. For instance, the Russians were the first to put a man in the moon. And immediately the Russian did it, the American was also able to send a man in the moon or in the space, you see. So that is, uh, 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 that is the propensity to take risk. Consider uh, uh, the, the story of exploration. How, of course, uh, uh, colonialism came to Africa. The whites in Germany, meeting in Germany, which what is also known as uh, uh, the German uh, uh, discussion, decided we really need to take over Africa. And from there, they started sending explorers, people like Mungo Park, people like Clapperton, people like uh, Vasco da Gama, people, people like Christopher Columbus to start going to other distant places they don't even know. That was the story of uh, exploitation or exploration. And of course, the conquer of Africa and the bocardization of Africa, Are you see? So this were the beginning of all those things. Those people, they take risks. When they were living for this journey, it was in fact full of uncertainty. In fact, most of them travel without compass. Their ship had no compass. And you see, because as of the time most of them traveled, there was nothing like compass. Person like Mongo Park arrived in Nigeria with a boat. Can you see? They arrived in Nigeria with a boat and finally died in the process of the exploration when his boat capsided in the river Niger. Today it is recognized that Mongo Park discovered the river Niger. But that is also a question fella Onikala Bokuti asked him, the musician, the famous legend from Nigeria. How would you say you discovered the river Niger when people were living close to the river Niger before you came? Can you see? So those are, those are also arguments, you know, 
uh, in terms of uh, social discourse. Can you see? So some uh, culture uh, uncertainty avoidance. Why some culture don't avoid uncertainty? They they, they take risks. The degree to which people prefer structured and unstructured situation. Structured is yes, you know everything, and then you can of course invest. But unstructured, you don't know what you are going to meet there. You took a decision. That is risk taking. You know you don't avoid uncertainty. Now we'll talk about pragmatism. Can you see? There is, of course, these two I'm seeing now, uh, I'm just seeing now. Otherwise, uh, I used to know that uh, there were about five of them. Uh, or, or in some book, there are about four of them. Then uh, there is also a perspective uh, in terms of this dimension, pragmatism. Hofstede is of the view that a society's devotion to traditional value, which of course, emphasizing the future, and of course, drift and persistence, that there are some societies that look into the future. And you see, they are pragmatic. And you see, they are always ahead, pragmatism. But there are people who are always looking behind, and you see, the past, and you see. And looking at the past constrain them from taking some proactive decisions, and you see. And of course, uh, Hofte was also of the view uh, with regards to dimensions of natural culture. He spoke about indulgence. Indulgence, which is of course the degree to which people in a culture tend to control their impulses and desire. And you see, people tend to control, certain cultures tend to control their impulses and desire. Why some are ready to jump and in fact, uh, 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 not they kind of uh, control their impulses and desires, all right. International values, international values. I uh, will talk about pragmatism, pragmatism. That is a national, call, a national culture attribute that emphasizes future, pragmatics, look into the future, the drift, the change uh, immediately. And of course, they are persistent. They are persistent. And so that is pragmatic uh, culture. Uh, with regards to international. And of course, we have normative. Normative, that is a national culture attribute that emphasizes past, past, and of course, present. Don't, they don't look into the future. They are contended with the, pres uh, with the present. They always look at the past and present. Respect for tradition. Tradition does not change. I tell you, certain time, one of the things that is holding Africa behind is tradition. And you see, see, Africa will say, no, that is not our tradition. Of course, tradition should sometimes change if tradition is not producing anything positive for society. And you see, respect for tradition and fulfillment of social obligations, which is, of course, a, a, a kind of a, 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 a prototype of a national culture. And of course, uh, with regards to international value, indulgence, a national culture attribute that emphasizing enjoying leisures, having a positive attitude and optimism. Can you see? Enjoyment, uh, enjoying leisure. South Africa is also a very good country where people enjoy leisure, time, having positive attitude and optimism, particularly among the white South Africans. They enjoy leisure, they travel a lot. They have positive world outlook. This cannot be generalized anyway in South Africa uh, for most of the black, of course, uh, citizens uh, who may not have the resources to enjoy such kind of leisure. And of course, uh, restrain, re, rest, restrain Restraint is a national culture attribute that emphasizes controlling impulse, emphasizes control and desire, and having a more cynical outlook. Okay? So they control their impulse and desire, and having a kind of more cynical outlook in their approach. South African values, okay? We'll talk about South African values. South African values tend to be individualistic, and I have still stated that individualistic from the perspective. South Africa say, so from the perspective that for years, of course, South Africa have, of course, been 
been under a kind of white uh, 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 supremacist uh, government, which of course, like the white uh, oriented individualistic approach, it seems to have also infiltrated in the world view of uh, 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 so many South Africans. But the original perspective of South Africa from the black perspective is uh, Ubuntu. You are because we are living together as community. So more of the white South African can be categorized as individualistic. Why, of course, uh, the black South Africans may have, of course, a communitarian interest, but still at the extreme because of the long years of uh, uh, colonialism or apartheid in South Africa, it seems those Ubuntu flavor uh, seems to have actually been adulterated by individualistic uh, flavors. So, and of course, normative and fairly high in power. Uh, 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 normative of South African society is also a little bit normative, can you see? They always consider the part. And of course, fairly high in power, uh, uh, in terms of power distance. People in South Africa tend to easily accept hierarchies. Hierarchies create the basis for power distance and build, and build in class differences between people. Can you see? There's a class difference between the two people in South Africa, the rich and the poor, they see that inequality is very high in South Africa. And of course that inequality is also reflected within organizations. We are 70% of South African managers are white compared uh, 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 to uh, their population. And of course that of the black, all right? And of course, uh, with regards to values also, value tend to be relatively low value tend to be relatively low on uncertainty avoidance. Value tend to be relatively low on uncertainty avoidance. That is to say that to a certain extent, South Africa don't accept uncertainty. Of course, many people have taken risk in South Africa. In fact, among these three millionaires that I have mentioned, uh, one of them grew up in South Africa. He's, he studied in South Africa before he moved to the US. That is uh, Elon Musk. Ella Mark or something of that nature. Uh, Ella Mark uh, uh, was in South Africa. And of course, the first person to actually use his money to take himself uh, uh, to, to, to space was a South African also, uh, Shuti Watt. Shuti Watt was uh, 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 graduated from the uh, University of Cape Town, you see. So uh, uh, tend to be relatively low uh, on uncertainty avoidance. Okay, now, but we can say because South Africa is a rainbow nation, this may not be, of course, a generalized. Adults are relatively tolerant of uncertainty and ambiguity more than, of course, uh, 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 younger generation. You see. And of course, uh, South Africa tend to score high on muscularity. Uh, most people emphasize traditional gender role in comparison uh, like countries like Denmark, Finland. Most of the leaders in South Africa, majority of them are male. Compared to countries like Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden, uh, that uh, of course, most of their leaders are female. Yeah, is there any question? Yes, Prof. Uh, I, I just wanted to ask um, the states that uh, it was just given now, the 70%, is it, um, privately owned companies or included there or uh, because I know if it's privately your owned. Your network is breaking. We are not hearing you. Can you adjust your network? Uh, can you hear me now? Hello? I can yeah, hear you, I'm Kevin. Okay, no, the question I'm, I want to ask is um, the, regarding the stats that uh, Prof just gave about the 70%. Uh, does that include, um, is it including privately owned uh, companies? Yeah, that will include private owned companies because also, uh, because in the government owned com uh, companies, uh, there have been efforts uh, to uh, redress most of those things. But in the private owned uh, organization, I think of course uh, the white, dominate the managerial position. 
of course, and I don't I don't see that changing anytime soon because uh, of the mere fact that it is actually privately owned. So um, that statistics is gonna remain like that for a while until uh, maybe there are some changes in the government uh, companies and so on. Yeah, which is why, of course, uh, uh, they are talking about uh, which is why they have promulgated uh, the laws related to affirmative action and, of course, uh, uh, black economic empowerment and so many other things. Uh, so that, of course, government can deal and work with companies that are able to meet the target. So every com every complaint uh, in South Africa have to submit their triple B E E report, uh, so that of course government is aware in terms of monitoring uh, uh, the numbers of managers, uh, the constituent of the labor force in any, any given uh, organization, both public and private. Is that clear? Yes, clear, Prof. Yeah. No, systematically, uh, they are addressing the issue. And of course, uh, 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 the issue has to be a systematic uh, uh, approach. Uh, 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 it's, it's, it's been implemented systematically. That is why in most South African organizations, you always hear the term transformation, uh, that transformation is needed. Can you see? So, that is that, with regards to uh, 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 high muscularity uh, uh, in some countries compared to, of course, uh, some countries like Denmark, Norway, Sweden. Now, often described as an indulgent culture, there is, of course, uh, 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 South Africa is often described as an indulgent culture, uh, which reflects a positive, upbeat culture where people place values on leisure. People like leisure. Uh, South Africa is a tourist destination. Okay? See, the whole world comes here for tourism. And of course, uh, uh, people spend their money traveling to game reserves, traveling so many beautiful places. That, of course, uh, 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 shows they indulge a lot. Okay? You see? And uh, uh, once it is Friday, South Africa say, thank God it's Friday. Okay? You see? So, you can, of course, know that uh, the rest of the weekend, uh, when it is close to Monday, people start feeling, well, why is Monday coming? <laughs> I wish this, uh, I wish this uh, weekend can be extended, you see. And of course, uh, that is also, we seem to have many uh, public holiday also. So people enjoy uh, some of those uh, public ho holiday, like Women's Day, Mother's Day, Heritage Day, uh, Mandela's Day, and all the rest. So those are also helping to boost uh, the, 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 the desire of people to enjoy and of course uh, 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 have value for leisure, you see. However, this South African data is representative according to this author uh, in terms of leisure, representative only of the white population. Somebody who have collected the data have collected it from the white population, which is a tiny minority population and not indicative of South African population as a whole. So summary, ladies and gentlemen, an implication for manager research about the link between personality and job performance has become more promising in the past 20 years. Screening job candidate for high conscientiousness, as well as the other big five traits, depending on the criteria an organization prefer, should bring dividends in terms of a, a selection. You see, should pay off. You see, should pay off in terms of a selection of candidates for job. So specific factors such as job demand the degree of required interaction with others and the organization culture, an example of situational variables. Can you see specific sort of job demand, the degree of required interaction with others, and of course, the organizational culture are examples of situational variables that moderate the personality job performance relationship. Can you see? So one must evaluate the job the work group and the organization to determine the optimal personality fit who will fit 
with this uh, 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 job. And of course, the people in that organization and the organization itself, which is, of course, the essence of organizational behavior. You see? So, other, trait, other traits, such as core self evaluation or narcissism, may be relevant in certain situations. Can you see? You cannot discard them, they could be relevant in certain situations. For instance, with regards to issues of devil's advocate, or if you want to, of course, uh, 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 if you want to a kind of a trigger conflict, uh, uh, you know, we say stimulate, stimulation of conflict. You may need somebody who may have those uh, narcissistic uh, uh, tendencies or narcissism uh, in terms of uh, his way of uh, behavior. May be relevant in certain uh, situations. I uh, will still continue with the final summary. That is, of course, although Maria B. Trait Test, uh, that is MBTI, has been widely criticized, it may have a place, it may have a place in organizations. In training and development, it can help employees better understand themselves, help them, help, uh, help team members, sorry, better understand one another, and open up communication in work group and possibly reduce conflict. So employee performance and satisfaction are likely to be higher if their value fit well with an organization. So employee performance and job satisfaction may become higher if their value is in consultants or if their value fit with the organizational value. You see. So managers are more likely to appreciate, evaluate positively and allocate reward to employees who fit in into an organization. And employees are more likely to be satisfied if they perceive that they fit into a particular organization, which is of course job, uh, job satisfaction. So managers should therefore seek a job candidate who, in addition to meeting, in addition to meeting, the other job requirement have a value system compatible with that of the organization. All right. And this again, Pima, with that, we'll come to the end of the topic of uh, personality and values of uh, individuals and their fit with an organization. All right. Great. Any question? Any question, colleagues? Yes, Clement. Nothing yet. Nothing, Prof. Oh, thank you very much. Any other question? I have a question, question Prof. Okay, Sabrina, um, what is your question? Just based on the example that you gave, like two or three slides back on the South African values. Um, my question is just. The, the findings are based on a population size of about 10%, about because I think the white population in South Africa is about 10% of the total population. Yeah, so yeah, um, how, how can we make the, the inference then that those are South African values if the data set is only no, based is, on about 10%? Yeah, that is why I said that the findings cannot be used uh, to generalize. And yes. of course, uh, and of course, the uh, researcher have already placed a, a COVID, uh, co uh, COVID mTOR uh, that of course, this is more or less applicable to the white population in South Africa. So there are research you do, you said this research cannot be used. That becomes the limitation of the research, that this research cannot be used to generalize uh, in terms of the whole nation because specific uh, 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 grouping were actually used for the research alone. Okay. But okay. is there research available, Prof, um, in terms of the black population and their, their values? Uh, basically, I think that is what you have to, uh, maybe uh, maybe you can search at that on Google <laughs> whether there are, yeah, maybe you can search at that whether there are uh, possi uh, possibility that there is a research that has been done. Uh, but I know that, of course, uh, 
uh, there was certain research, uh, like uh, last year, uh, last two years, uh, I have a PhD student, uh, Sani Meleko, who, okay. is, who actually investigated the black uh, female uh, uh, leaders uh, in South Africa, you know, right. the perception of how black female leaders are perceived in South Africa. So there could be other uh, research around that. If one have not uh, picked up interest in that area, you may not uh, get an information around that. But probably type it on Google to see whether there's a result that have been done uh, around that area uh, in terms of uh, uh, issues around personalities and of course, uh, what you have alluded to. All right. Thanks yeah. for that, Professor. Great a lot. Thanks a lot, Sabrina. All right. Any other question? Nandago, do you have a question? No question for me, Professor. I'm good. Fantastic. Great. All right. Is there Eric any question? I Not have enough. one from our side as well, Prof. Okay, fantastic. My, my well, question would be about our assignments and assessments. Yeah, definitely I'm like that. Like I said, uh, you will be seeing your assignment during this week. At least we have covered uh, almost all your uh, learning uh, guide. And uh, uh, with regards to that uh, uh, topic uh, in terms of uh, uh, satisfaction, uh, that is attitude and satisfaction, I will also upload the slide for you so that it helps you to also uh, understand uh, when you're reading your textbook. Yeah, so definitely. All the slides that we have covered from Friday to today, I will also upload all of them for you. And uh, additional materials that uh, can also support your reading uh, to help you. Thank so you. But in the course of the week, I will upload your assignment uh, so that you start your assignment. And uh, there could be possibility of myself cost constituting every one of you back again, uh, just for us to have a kind of class debate, which will be uh, Mark, uh, Mark will be awarded uh, uh, related to that uh, particular debate, uh, you know, in terms of generating a, a back for debate. So my idea in terms of uh, the question, probably we can do a pa participation mark will be there. Uh, one group activity, which is of course the debate will be there. One group activity, which is the research assignment will be there. Then there'll be one individual activity, which is of course assessment of all, all we have covered in the class, uh, that will be one aspect. Then I will be able to generate a mark uh, that uh, uh, will tell you whether you have actually fulfilled all the criteria and obligations related to this your course. All right, all right, yeah. thanks, bro. Thanks a lot. All right, Serafina, are you still there? Or oh, Safina? Sophia, Prof. Okay, Safia, okay, okay. Maybe I'm remembering uh, this movie by Sarafina in South Africa. Uh, oh, okay. Where she, <laughs> okay. Where, where she was saying, freedom is coming tomorrow. Can you see? So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, are you still there? Yes, um, I'm still here, Prof. It's just that I missed out on, uh, okay, now yesterday, but that I can access it. Okay, you can assess it. It's, it's just, yeah, it's just the assignments, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, no, like I have explained to Eric regarding the assignment, uh, we will begin to get the assignment there uh, as soon as uh, uh, possible. At least before the meeting, I will throw one assignment, uh, which has to do with group assignment. Are you, have you, have you now joined the group? Yeah, is it new groups or is it the old I don't group? know if you guys already have an existing group. Uh, during uh, our last uh, lecture on Friday, we have agreed that uh, we should have a group of three individuals each regarding the research assignment. So I don't know, do you have an existing group, a pre-existing group before? Our old groups, Prof, are in, in a pair of two. In a pair of two? Yes. Uh, however, in our last discussion, we uh, yeah. did agree that uh, 
will have a pair of theory for the research assignment. Yes, I, I think uh, some have already concluded their uh, groups of three. OK, so yeah. uh, if you are not in a group, just find, uh, uh, find out from your colleagues uh, that still need one person to join them. Uh, because now, since we have uh, 15 individuals in the class, uh, supposed to supposed to be in the class, but I noticed that we are still having about 13 individuals that are regular. Uh, definitely look for a group that you can join uh, uh, to break up uh, the third uh, person in that particular group. All right. Sabrina, you still have a question? Your hand is still up. Yes, my hand is still up. I have one more question, Prof. Okay. Um, just in terms of the assessments for this course, and I hope my question doesn't awake sleeping dogs. Okay. But on the on the annual schedule for this course, there's a test for this module noted for the 27th mm. of October. But you mm. haven't mentioned anything about a test, Prof, only assignments. So I just uh, want to make sure that there is no test. Uh, don't worry, both the test, both the test can be an assignment. Uh, you say on the uh, 27th of October? Yes. Okay, yeah. don't worry, I will, I will check my calendar. The handbook, uh, because of the kind of uh, uh, your module, which is quite packed, uh, there could be certain things we adjust in the handbook. Okay, we just need yeah. to be certain. I would appreciate if you could confirm that, Prof. Yeah. Um, yeah. Obviously, yeah. the... The preference is no test, seeing that we have a group assignment and an individual assignment. Uh, let's see. Uh, we can also, <laughs> of course, also test your <laughs> your absorption of knowledge. You know how far and how strong you have absorbed the knowledge that you have shared so far. But let's see. I believe in democracy. I think. I uh, Prof yes. Claude here. Yes, I'm hearing you. I think when, when, when you get when you get a lecture from somebody who studied in India and worked at the Central Bank of Nigeria, the absorption mm. is quite humongous. You say I want to hear you again. <laughs> I'm saying when somebody lectures you that has studied in India and worked at the Central Bank of Nigeria, I don't um. think we need a test anymore. You don't think you need a test anymore, why? <laughs> I just want to be, get one. Because we've been lectured by the best. That's what Claude's yeah. saying. <laughs> yes, Professor, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> OK, no, I know. I know I have given you a lot. And if you actually read most of the materials I have given you, in fact, you will never go wrong with this course. And in fact, the materials are even tied to other managerial aspects, both topics on globalization, which affect every organization today. So most of those materials that are coming, uh, articles that I've uploaded, uh, slides uh, will support you when you buy your textbook. And when you are reading your textbook, look at the slide, it aids you. And of course, when you read those articles, you'll be very much well acquainted. And I know that, of course, uh, the institution is very happy. The kind of materials that are given to you within this very short uh, while. Thank you. All right. So definitely, let me see. I will. I will. I will. Well, that is how I said there are possibility that I will call you uh, guys in for a kind of debate uh, in the class where we all can. Uh, use the debate uh, as a way of uh, 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 at least performing a duty that will generate marks. All right. All good, Prof. Fantastic. Any other question? Any other question? No, nothing, Prof. Okay. Okay. No other question. Uh, Sophia, Sophia, you don't have a question. No more question. <laughs> no, Prof. I think I have a question. I was just about things, but it's for, to the coordinates now. 
Okay. I just wanted to find out now, guys, did, how did you do the groupings now? Or how should we go about it? Or is it the old groups? How did you agree on that? So I think that is a question you have to now engage with <laughs> the, the body of uh, students, you know. Uh, among yes. you guys. Uh, yes, I'm now that. asking. I'm asking the colleagues now, Prof. Mm. I, I, yeah. I, I stand to be corrected, but uh, uh, the very time that the uh, Prof uh, talked about the groups, some group members said they were comfortable with the old groups, but they were co-opting other members to join to okay. make three individuals. Okay. But okay. what I'm not very sure is how many of such groups have. Uh, uh, been formed now. Okay. Okay, no, that is fine. At least uh, 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 you guys now have to follow up with one another. At least you have your contacts, and of course, uh, you have a WhatsApp group uh, and discuss. And if uh, you approach, yes. Can I, can I just ask um, on, on, in, in the class, is everybody on the WhatsApp group? Can we, can we just confirm that then we can we can have this discussion on the WhatsApp group? Okay, I'm not sure about that. That is what you guys have to find out with the class. Yeah, maybe maybe the person who's not on the WhatsApp group can and probably just course, say no. If... And of course, when you form a WhatsApp group, you can also add me. Uh, why do we, why I'm still handling the course? So that if I want to send any message, I can throw it into the WhatsApp group. Which is one fast way of uh, getting hold of uh, everybody. We, we will do that. We'll do that. Prof. We'll do that, Prof. We'll create a group where you are added. Okay, cool. But just to add on what Claude said, if anyone who's on the class now is not on our WhatsApp group, please drop your number in the chat box and we can add you. Great stuff. We're all quiet. I think we are all in. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, colleagues, uh, for your cooperation. And uh, uh, in fact, it was your cooperation that uh, enabled us to go this far uh, with regards to your course. And uh, uh, I believe we have achieved a lot. A, a lot. And uh, of course, uh, we have cross pollinated uh, ideas uh, enough, you know, uh, which, of course, a contribution from colleagues also uh, uh, related to. Uh, what you have actually lectured in terms of imparting knowledge. So uh, I think I must commend every one of you for your cooperation and for your support. And uh, I look forward to meeting you uh, again uh, when we uh, uh, talk in terms of your assignment and of course in terms of uh, your assessment and in terms of what you want to produce uh, uh, regarding uh, the maths and other things, you know. So, We'll continue talking uh, as far as uh, this uh, course is still in existence, you know. So that have a wonderful evening and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. For those who have not attended the church service because of this course, uh, if, you, uh, if you have a church that uh, coordinate evening mass or evening worship, you can uh, join them uh, 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 as part of it. Uh, one of my one of my friends when I was a, a young boy said God understands. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Prof. Okay. Have a good night. Thank you, Prof. You too. Have you a good, good evening. Good yeah. Night. Bye. Bye. Thank, you. Thank you so Bye. much. Bye. Yeah. yeah. Bye. See each other. Bye bye. God, you're very naughty. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Eric, I was waiting for your support there to get rid of that test, but huh? Uh, hey. nothing. <laughs> the recording is still running, guys. Bye. <laughs> I thought you were caught on. Claude said it all, man. He doesn't have to give it. <laughs> Hi, guys. Yeah. But yeah, sure. bye, you guys. We talk. Ciao.
Mm. 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 Mm.